So how many of you just came back from India? One, two. Three. Okay. So the rest of you are all healthy. I'm glad to know that most of you are healthy. And maybe even the three of them came back from India. And I have seven of you. Seven of you yes, from Cochin, yeah? You're surviving. <laughs> going on with life, right? All right, so we're going to present to you a little bit uh, PowerPoint presentation. I think it's more interesting for you to see pictures, right? Everybody likes to watch pictures. <coughs> we have some <coughs> presentations here. Of course, we begin with offering our obeisances to Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> Who knows the Sanskrit for this verse? Who knows the Sanskrit? I offer my respectful <coughs> obeisances unto my spiritual master who has opened my eyes, which were blinded by the darkness of ignorance with the torchlight of knowledge. Yes? What's the Sanskrit? No. When will Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, give me shelter under his lotus feet? So you can see in the in the picture, in the illustration, Lord Chaitanya, and this is Rupa Goswami represented there at the shelter of Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. Lord Chaitanya met with Rupa Goswami. Well, first they met at Ramakeli. Ramakeli, which is in Bengal. It was the capital of the Nawab Hussein Shah. Do you know the Nawab? The Nawab, the emperor. He was the emperor of Bengal. Very powerful man. He had a big empire, a big palace. And Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami were both working for him. And they had become Mohammedans. Their names were Sakara Malik. And what? And what was the other name? Sakar. Huh? Dabir Kas. Dabir Kas Sakar Ramali. So they were given these names by the Nawab, and they were, you know, one was the minister, one was the like the prime minister, and one was the chancellor of the exchequer. In other words, he was in charge of the finances, looking after the money. So they were living in, in Ramakeli, but then they left. They didn't like working that job. They didn't like that. And they were old also. They were not so young. They were older men. So they wanted to, they were hearing about Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya had come there to Ramakeli and he, he instructed, he told them, yes, it said, be good, you can leave, you know, give up this job. So they did, they both left at different times. First of all, Rupa Goswami left, and then later Sanatana left. Sanatana had to escape from prison because he got put in the prison. Anyway, Rupa Goswami met Lord Chaitanya in Allahabad. Well, now it's called Prayagraj. 
right? Prior graduate, the Ganga meets the Yamuna, and Saraswati is also below, Triveni. So Lord Chaitanya instructed Rupa Goswami. He, he taught them all the mellows of devotional service. And later on, Rupa Goswami wrote the book. Do you know that which book Rupa Goswami wrote? Rupa Goswami, what book did he write? Nectar, Nectar of Devotion. Yes, and also? Nectar of Devotion. Nectar of Instructions, right. Upadesh Amrita. Right? Nectar of Instruction and Nectar of Devotion. Both written by Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami got the teaching from Lord Chaitanya. So, we, we pray like that. When will Rupa Goswami, who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, what, what was the desire of Lord Chaitanya? What do you think was the desire? What desire did Lord Chaitanya have? Spread the holy name, yes. Every town and village, yes. Any other desire? He wanted us all to develop Krishna Prem, love of God, right? We say, Namo Mahabhadanaya, <coughs> Krishna Prem Prem. Lord Chaitanya is the most merciful. He came to give everyone Krishna Prem. And with the help of Rupa Goswami, he was able to give many people Krishna Prem. Right? So we're, we're looking at the Mangala Charan. Before we begin speaking on Shastras, we will recite the Mangala Charan. So you can see here the Parampara. You see Gornikai there. Then you can see the Goswamis. And then it comes to Jagannathas Babaji, then Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Gorki Shortas Babaji, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, and then our own Srila Prabhupada. So, in the Mangala Charan, we pray, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master, and of all the other preceptors on the path of devotional service. So, we don't just have one guru. We have many gurus, right? We're very lucky, we're very fortunate. We have many teachers. And we offer our respectful obeisances to all of them. When we get initiation, when we get connected into the ISKCON society, we become connected to the parampara, and we become connected to all these teachers, all the way, all the way up to who's the, who's the Adi Guru, who's the original Guru of the parampara? Hmm? Which parampara are we coming in? Huh? Who knows the paramparas? How many paramparas are there? Four, yes, four channels, right? Just like, so I remember as a kid we had television, but, you know, a few channels. So, four channels, parampara, right? And which channel are we in? Who? I can't hear. What, where are the four channels coming from? What is coming from? You don't know this? What is coming from? Lakshmi. That is called the Sri Vaishnavas. Do you have Sri Vaishnavas here in Kuchin? Maybe not. If you, did you go to Vrindavan? If you were in Vrindavan, they have Sri Vaishnavas there in Vrindavan. They have a big temple. 
big temple. Sri Vaishnavas. The Sri Vaishnavas, they had the, the red tea like in the middle and the white on the outside. The Vaishnavas, they're in the line coming from Lakshmi. Then there's another line coming from Nimbarka. Nimbarka Acharya. They're coming from the four Kumaras. Originally the Adi Guru is the four Kumaras. <coughs> Nimbarka Acharya. And their temple, if you go to Varsana, you see they have a temple there. They also worship Radha and Krishna. Now the Sri Vaishnavas, they worship Vishnu. They worship Rama. They worship Narsimha and Varaha. You don't see Radha and Krishna. You may see Krishna, but you won't see Radha. That's the Sri. But Nimbarka, they worship Radha and Krishna. And they're coming from four Kumaras. And then there's the Rudra Sampradaya coming from Lord Shiva. They also have, Lord Shiva also has his Sampradaya. And we are in the one coming from Brahma. Lord Brahma is our Adi Guru. So our line is called the Brahma Madhava Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. We're coming from, the original Guru is Lord Brahma. And then Lord Brahma, he, uh, his disciple, who was it? Who was the disciple of Lord Brahma? After Lord Brahma you have Narada. And Narada is the guru of Vyasa. So you have Vyasa Dev. And Vyasa Dev, he was the guru of Madhva. Madhva Acharya. So man, we are called the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We are called the Gaudiyas. Gaudiya Vaishnava. Or Tilak. If people see you with the Tilak, they say, oh, a Gaudiya Vaishnava. So we are the Gaudiya Vaishnava. So we have many spiritual teachers. We offer our respects to all of them. Who are these people? The six Goswamis, right? The Goswamis, their names are there. Rupa, Sanatan, Raghunath, Raghunath Bhatta, Jiva Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Six Goswamis. There's a nice song. Sometimes we sing the Goswami Astika. Bande Rupa Sanatano Rakujako Shri Jiva Gopalako Bande Rupa Sanatano Rakujako Shri Jiva Gopalako So on the altar we have the picture of the six Goswamis and we also offer our respects to them. They were the disciples of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they're very empowered. They wrote many books and they discovered the holy places. And they lived in Vrindavan and they established temples in Vrindavan. So they are our teachers and we offer our prayers to them, their, their mercy. And here we have Panchatadva, right? When we go to Mayapur, then we get the darshan of Panchatadva. You can see the deities of Panchatadva. Very beautiful, very majestic, very big, very powerful. Right? They won't be so big when you put them in the TOVP. <laughs> when they go to the TOVP, we think, oh, it's so small. <laughs> anyway, they're very majestic. So, from the left, you see the figure on the left with the beard? Advaita Acharya. 
And then next to Advaita Acharya is Lord Nityananda. And then in the center, with the two arms raised, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then next is Gadharhar. Gadharhar Pandi. And then finally on the on the on our, our right is Srivas Thakur. Shri or Srivas Pandi. Srivas So Advaita Acharya, he is an incarnation. Well, first of all, Lord Chaitanya. Who is Lord Chaitanya? Sri Krishna Chaitanya. We say Sri Krishna Chaitanya. No, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Have you heard it before? No? Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Meaning, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. Right? So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the center. And then next to Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda. Who is Lord Nityananda in Krishna Lila? Balaram, right. Brajendra Nandana Se, Sachi Sutta Hailo He, Balaram Hailo Nitai. So, Lord Chaitanya comes, uh, the, well, the son of Lord, uh, Lord Krishna comes as the son of Sachi, and Lord Balaram comes as Nityananda. Nityananda. And then next to Lord Nityananda, the old man with the white beard, that is Advaita, Advaita Acharya. He was much older than Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya appeared, he was already 60 years old or so. And he stayed after Lord Chaitanya disappeared. Advaita was still here in the world. So Advaita Acharya was very important in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. He was responsible for Lord Chaitanya coming in this world. He called to Lord Chaitanya, please come, please come. Right? Do you call to Lord Chaitanya sometimes? Do you call out to Krishna? Oh, Krishna, save me. Oh, help me. Do you call to Krishna? Yes. No? Yes. I hope so. <laughs> Not too often. Yes. <laughs> but Advaita Acharya, he is actually, he is Mahavishnu. He is Mahavishnu and he is also Sada Shiva. So he is not an ordinary Jiva. He is also Vishnu Tattva. He is also Vishnu Tattva. He's like Lord Vishnu. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, so he is Vishnu Tattva. And Lord Nityananda is Lord Balaram. So he is also Vishnu Tattva. And Advaita Acharya, he is Mahavishnu. So he is also Vishnu Tattva. So sometimes you will see when they worship, the deep, they will put Tosi garlands on them. So we only put Tosi garlands on the deities which are Vishnu Tattva. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is the Supreme Lord. We said, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri huh? Krishna Chaitanya. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And Lord 
Nityananda is Balaram. What is the relationship between Krishna and Balaram? Balaram is expansion of Krishna. He's the expansion. Krishna is the original and Balaram is the expansion. And then Advaita, he is the incarnation. He is the avatar, the incarnation. Gadarha, he who is Gadarha? Gadarha Pandit is Radharani, right? Yes, Gadarha Pandit is Srimati Radharani coming in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. So Gadarha is the internal potency. And then Srivas, who is Srivas Pandit? Huh? Narada Muni, right? Srivas Pandit, Narada Muni. But Narada Muni, he was a brahmachari. Srivas Pandit was not brahmachari. He was Grihastha. He lived with his brothers, with their families. But Lord Chaitanya would go to his home and he would have every night kirtan there. They would have kirtan every evening in the home. The whole night they do kirtan in the home of Shiva. Lord Chaitanya came back from Gaya after getting initiation and he told the devotees, let's not sleep at night anymore. Let's just do kirtan. Would you like that? No more sleeping at night. Every night we will meet and we will just do kirtan. Why we should spend the whole night sleeping, waste so much time, sleep? Better we do kirtan all night. And Lord Chaitanya and all the devotees, they would meet every night and they would do kirtan. They would have wonderful kirtan, dancing and chanting the whole night. And then when the sun came up in the morning, then they go home, take breakfast. Wouldn't you like that? Did you do that for Vaikuntha Ikarasi? Did you stay up the whole night? Yeah? Did you chant and dance all night? No. Anyway. So, Srivast. Srivast is Naradamani. He is the internal potent, the, the marginal potency. Naradamani is marginal potency of the Lord. So Panchatattva, five forms of the Absolute Truth, five features. You have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the original Swayam Bhagavan. Then you have Lord Nityananda, who is the expansion of his Balaram. Then you have the incarnation, Advaita Acharya, non different from Mahavishnu. Then Gadarha is Srimati Radharani, the internal potency. And finally, Srivas Pandit, the marginal potency of. Okay, you got it? Five pictures, Panchatantva. And here we have, who is it? Radha Madhava and the Astasakis. Who knows the names of the Astasakis? <coughs> Tunga Vidya, from left to right. Tunga Vidya. Chitra, Champakalata, Lalita, Vishaka, Induleka, Rangadevi, <coughs> Susi. Yes. Good. So the eight gopis, the Astasakis, <coughs> with Radha and Madhava. The Supreme Lord. 
and you can see they say all the gopis headed by Lalita and Vishaka. Lalita and Vishaka, they're the most confidential. They're like the leader of the gopis. So they're directly in touch with <coughs> Srimati Radharani. So we offer our prayers to Krishna. Oh, there's no picture of Krishna there. But the prayer is very nice. Oh my dear Krishna, ocean of mercy. Hey Krishna. Karina Sindhu, yeah, ocean of mercy. Then Dinabandhu, friend of the distressed. Dinabandhu, Jagatpate the source of the creation. Yes? Yes? Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Mokisha Gopikakata, Naragakata Namosute. Yes, you are the master of the cowherd man and the lover of the gopis. <coughs> Especially Raja. Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste And then Radharani Pranam Stapta Radharani is described that her Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, her body, her complexion is a golden color like molten gold. And she is the queen of Vrindavan. Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Radhe Vrindavan Ishwari. Vrindavan Ishwari, she's the queen of Vrindavan. And she is the daughter of Maharaj Vrishabhanu. And who's the mother? Who's the mother? Vrishabhanu's the father? Kirtida, yes, right, good. And you're very dear to Lord Krishna. So we offer these prayers every day. <coughs> we should know. And this is, the, these are the deities of Sanatan Goswami, Madan Mohan, Radha Madan Mohan. If you, if you go through the Vaishnava song book, they have the Mangala Charan there, and they have the prayers. We offer this prayer to Madan Mohan deities. Jayatam Surator Pangor Mama Manda Matirgati Matsarva Swapadam Bojo Radha Madhana Mohan. So those are the deities you can see, very, very special deities. They were found by Sanatana Goswami. They were actually left from the time of Lord Krishna. Our Lord Krishna's grandson, he had established deities, and those were some, this one set of the deities which had been worshipped for like 5,000 years. So these deities, they were in Jaipur, they were in Vrindavan, but then the, because Aranjit was coming and they were destroying the deities, so the deities, to protect them, they were moved to Jaipur. So, Radha Madhama and they were in Jaipur for some time, but then it happened that they moved to another, they moved to Karoli, a place called Karoli. It's between Vrindavan and Jaipur. What happened was there was a young princess there and she was very attached to the deities. So it was arranged she would get married. But she said, I can't go without Radha Madan Mohan. I can't go without Madan Mohan. 
If I'm going to go to some other, Madame Mohan has to go also. And so it was arranged, the deities also went there and they built a big temple. And if you go there, a very beautiful temple. You can often, when we go to Vrindavan, we like to go to Jaipur. And on the way to Jaipur, there's this place where Radha Madan Mohan is. a big temple. The streets are very narrow. You have to get off the bus, you have to take a rickshaw or something to go. But it's very wonderful. And people there are all, <coughs> all singing songs, they're all doing kirtan, and they're singing in Jai Radha Madan Mohan. It's very wonderful atmosphere. So Radha Madan Mohan, they're the deities of what is called Sambandha Gyan. The, the Veda, the, all the scriptures, they're divided into three sections. There is Sambandha Gyan, Abhidaya Gyan, and Triojana Gyan. Sambandha means relationship, the knowledge of the relationship. So these deities, they help us to establish our relationship with Krishna. When you come, when we come to worship Krishna, we should go to Madan Mohan and pray to them. <coughs> and how to pray to them? Like here. Glory to the all-merciful Radha and Madan Mohan. I am lame and ill-advised, yet they are my directors, and their lotus feet are everything to me. All right, so, Jayatam Surator Pangor. I am lame and ill-advised, so that's why we come to Madan Moha. Take shelter of their lotus feet. Matsarvasva Padam Bojo Radha Madana Mohana. So Radha Madana Mohana, they are the deity of Sambandha Gyan. And then you have the deities of Radha Govinda. They are the deities of the Abhidaya, which is Sambandha is the relationship, Abhidaya is the process by which we practice that relationship. The process which we're practicing is bhakti yoga. Our process is bhakti. So we worship Radha Govinda. Have you seen Radha Govinda anybody? You go to Jaipur? Jaipur is very famous. In Jaipur everyone knows the name Radha Govinda. Very famous deity. They were brought, because they were the main deities in Vrindavan, they had a big temple there in Vrindavan. So Aramzev wanted to break the deity, so they brought the deity to Jaipur. And the king, her, the king of Jaipur at that time, he was a great devotee, and he took the deities in his palace. And so after some time, the people of Vrindavan said, we want to take Govinda back to Jai, back to Vrindavan now, because uh, Arantep is gone, no more trouble. But the king said, no, no, no. They said, Govinda has come to my home. I cannot tell him to go. Right? <coughs> if the deity comes to your home, you can't tell the deity not to go. <coughs> deity comes to your home, the home becomes the deities. And the king made Govinda the king. And the king made himself the servant of Govinda. That's how it is. The king became the servant of Govinda. So the, you can see the deities, very beautiful Govinda Ji. So the prayer is at the bottom. Divya Vrindaranya Kalpa Drumadya Srimad Radnagara Simhasanasto Srimad Radha Srila Govinda Devo 
Cristalibi, Seva Mano, Smarami. In a temple of jewels in Vrindavan, underneath a desire tree, Radha Govinda, served by their most confidential associates, sit upon an effulgent throne. I offer my obeisances unto them. So Govinda Ji, very, very special deities. We want to pray to them also. This is for the process. And then there's one more deity, Priyogena, the goal. And the deity is Gopina, the lord of the Gopis. So there's a deity of Radha Gopina. And you can see the deity there. It's a very beautiful also in Vrinda, it's also in Jaipur. Sriman Rasa Rasarambi Vamsivata Tatastita Karshan Venus Vanir Gopir Gopinata Shri Sriman. Sri Srila Gopinata originated the transcendental mellow of the Rasadan. And he stands on the shore in Vamsivat and attracts the attention of the cowherd damsels with the sound of his celebrating flute. May they all confer upon us their benediction. So in this way we offer prayers to the three the three main deities of Vrindavan. Madame Mohan. Govinda, Govinda, <coughs> Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Atvaita Jagadha, Shri Vasadi, Gora, Bhakta Vrinda. Yeah. So this way, this is our Mangala Chara. We offer our prayers to all these great personalities. So we are speaking about Srimad Bhagavatam and we try to encourage devotees to read Prabhupada's books. Of course, Srimad Bhagavatam is not just one book, it's many books. So we encourage devotees to read first Bhagavad Gita. If you go through the Bhagavad Gita, then it will be easier to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. But Srimad Bhagavatam is very, very special book, as Prabhupada says here. If you read Srimad Bhagavatam, then immediately you will realize God. And, and in another place, Srila Prabhupada said, just by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Would you like to see Krishna? Yes. yes. So you can see Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. Do any of you have a Srimad Bhagavatam at home? Yes? Yes. You have a book at home? Good. Are you reading? Sometimes, yeah. <coughs> so, in, in the morning, when we give Srimad Bhagavatam class, we will recite a prayer. <coughs> Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhiraya Right? You know this prayer? The meaning is shown here. Before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should first offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, Narayan. Then unto Nara Narayan Rishi the supermost human being 
and unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and finally unto Srila Vihasati, the author. Right? You all know that you can see who, who there's Mother Saraswati, there's Nara Narayan Rishi, there's Lord Narayan, and there's Srila Vihasati. <coughs> the Asadi is a great sage who compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam. So before we read the Srimad Bhagavatam in the morning, we will say this prayer. Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasati Vyasam Devim Sarasati Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhiraya And then there's another prayer we say, right? Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nittam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloti Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki So the meaning is shown here by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam. Right? Are you coming regular for classes? Yeah? How many of you come every time? How often you come? Once a week? Hmm? Once a week? How many of you come once a week? Put your hand up. Once a week? Yeah? So, regular <coughs> attendance. You have to come regularly, you have to hear. Just like medicine. You have to take it regularly, right? Or exercise. You have to exercise regular. If you don't do it regular, not much good. Right? So you have to be regular to come to class. Chanting. You have to do it regular. How many of you chant every day? Oh, very good. Many of you chanting every day. <coughs> Yeah, you have to chant regularly. And then, so classes, <coughs> regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam. <coughs> Usually we have classes on the Bhagavatam in the morning. Probably morning difficult for you to come, huh? <coughs> Many other things to do in the morning. But temple, in the temple every morning, Bhagavatam class. We have in Mayapur Bhagavatam class. So, not, so two things are mentioned. <coughs> regular in the classes and rendering service to the pure devotee. Rendering service to Prabhupada. Doing service for Prabhupada, the pure devotee. How do you do service? Serve this society by serving this temple because this is Prabhupada's temple. <coughs> so by doing that service, all that is troublesome <coughs> to the heart is almost completely destroyed. What is the trouble in the heart? What things are in the heart giving you trouble? Calm, crude, low, lazy, angry, envy, all these bad things, a lot of dirty things are in the heart. We have to clean the heart and the result is loving service unto the personality of Godhead 
who is praised with transcendental <coughs> songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Right? Nasta praised Prabhadreshu. <coughs> Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiti Sri Prabhupada used to do class every morning Srimad Bhagavata and he would stay awake a whole night translating and writing his books, the Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada loved so much the Srimad Bhagavatam. Whenever he got any money, he would use it to print Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam begins, there are three verses in the beginning. Here, this is the third verse which describes about the Srimad Bhagavatam. See, the Srila Vyasadeva wrote the book and he's addressing all of you. All expert and thoughtful men and ladies. Right? Men and ladies, here he only says men, but actually we have men and ladies. Relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree. You see the desire tree on the right? This is the desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Shukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Nigma kalpata rargalitam palam shukamukadam rita dravatam yatam pipata bhagavatam rasamalayam mahuraho rashika bhavi kabukaha Zid nigma kalpata Nigama Kalpa Taro. Kalpa. Kalpa Briksha. Desire tree. Nigama Kalpa. And you can see the fruits. Dharma, Arda, Kama Moksha. Dharma meaning religion. Arda, economic development. Kama, sense gratification and moksha, liberation. And so this is the fruits. But the mature fruit, the mature fruit of the Vedic literature is the Srimad Bhagavatam. All of these other things like economic development and sense gratification, these things are not the real mature fruit. You want to get the fruit, you have to taste the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it said that this Srimad Bhagavatam is pleasing even for the liberated souls. Even you're a liberated soul, right? Are you a liberated soul? Any of you? Trying, right? <laughs> trying to be liberated souls. We're all trying. I hope you're trying. Yes. Some are trying harder than others. Yeah. <laughs> are you trying? Are you a liberated soul? Yes. Okay. All right. So any questions on this? I don't want to go on too long on this. It's a bit, it gets more complicated. But let me see what the next one. Uh, this is a prayer to Lord Krishna. The coming in the eighth chapter, which means the prayers by Queen Kunti. 
namo pankajana paya namo pankajama lene namo pankajana traya namaste pankajangraye it's a prayer offered by queen kunti and she's talking about how lord krishna's abdomen is marked with the depression of a, a lotus flower and lord krishna is always decorated with garlands this these are not lotus flowers but these are flowers <laughs> these are nice flowers but krishna likes lotuses and krishna's glands is as cool as the lotus and his lotus feet are marked with lotus flowers so it's a beautiful prayer krishnaya vasudevaya devaki nandanaya cha nanda gopakomaraya govindaya namo namaha and, and then kunti said namo pankajana paya namo pankajamalane namo pankajanitraya Namaste Pankachangare. Pankachangare. There was a very nice devotee. He and his brother, they served Radha Madhava for 50 years in Mayapur. So he departed from the world just at the time of the COVID. But he was a wonderful devotee. His name was Pankachangare. Anyway, Jananikas Prabhu is still there, serving the deities. All right, time for questions by the sages. You are the sages, right? Any questions? <coughs> Who has questions? Let me hear. Yes? All right. Yes? Uh, <clears throat> Maharaj, today is the disappearance day of His Holiness Bhakti Vrijayananda Swami Maharaj. Oh, really? So we'd like to hear from your association with him, Maharaj. You can share with us with the great. Okay. <clears throat> so, Bhakti Vrijayananda Swami Maharaj. He was the very first Malaysian devotee, right? Did you meet him? Yes. You met him? Mm -hmm. from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So, Maharaj <coughs> came here many times. He came for the inauguration <coughs> of the temple here. Came here, stayed here for some time. <coughs> I, <coughs> I met him <coughs> in England. Maharaj joined the movement in the UK. His parents had sent him to England to study. <coughs> Malaysians always think better to go to England for some reason. I'm from England, you know, I think better to come to Malaysia. <laughs> I go to England, horrible, you know, always cold and wet and cloudy. Prabhupada said, they asked Prabhupada, what's it like in hell? Prabhupada said, this is England, this is hell. Every day, cloudy, never see the sun. And cold as well. You know, here in Malaysia, it may be wet, you may not see the sun but it never gets very cold. Anyway, Maharaj went to the UK to find like, who's from? He was from quite a, an aristocratic family, they were well to do. So they sent him to the UK to study. And when he was in the UK, he met another devotee, someone called Subak. Do you know Subak Swami? No? Anyway, Subak, so Bhagavad Swami is, is 80 now, 84. He just had his Vyasa Puja in Nasi. Anyway, 
So Bhag Swami, had, was, he was from Calcutta and his family had sent him to England because they saw that when he was in Calcutta, he was always going to temples and associating with sadhus. So his family were worried that maybe he'd become a sadhu. So they sent him to England. And he went to England and became a Hare Krishna. <laughs> so he became a devotee and he was living in Birmingham. And Bhakti Pranjan Prachandranandana Maharaj was a student. He was studying in Birmingham. And he met Subhag. He met Subhag. And the, you know, Bhakti Prachandran Nandana Maharaj liked very much Subhag Swami. They were very close. And Subhag had already joined Krishna consciousness, <coughs> taken initiation. And Bhakti Prachandana Bhakti Prachanda Nandana Maharaj, he also joined, became a brahmachari. He was young, at the time, 30, some, just over 30. So he joined the movement there in the UK, and he spent many, several years there, preaching, distributing books every day in the UK. We would go out for book distribution, and we would we go on the streets and meet people and try to distribute books and tell them about Krishna. So Maharaj was a very dedicated book distributor. He worked very hard for several years. But after some time, you know, people, because our movement was starting to expand and we didn't have any temple in Malaysia, there was no temple anywhere around, hardly. There were very few temples in India at the time. So Maharaj had gone to India to help in India, and he was serving in Vrindavan. But they decided they wanted to develop Krishna consciousness in other countries outside of India. So because Maharaj was from Malaysia, it was decided he should go to Malaysia and he should help to establish Krishna consciousness in Malaysia. I think someone had already come here before Maharaj came. There was already some uh, young man from the UK, somehow he had come here with his wife and they were trying to preach here the devotees Prabhupada had come here also, 1971, Prabhupada had come here, and Prabhupada had come to, he was in KL, and he went to Tilakintar, he went to Ipoh, and he went to Penang. He went around in 1971. There was no highways, he had to go through all the long roads and all the traffic lights and everything. But Prabhupada traveled, he went to all these places, gave programs, and he said we should have temples here. That was 1971. But nothing really happened. There was no, nobody stayed here. Some foreigners came, some Westerners, or someone from America, I think it was Hanuman Swami, came here, and he was here when Prabhupada was here. There was another man, Amoga, who was from Australia. He also had come here but when Prabhupada was here. But, you, you know, they, did, they didn't stay. They were not able to stay in Malaysia. And so, nothing happened. But then later on, it was after Prabhupada had left the world, like 1979 or so, when devotees started to come to Malaysia. And Bhakti Prachendananda Maharaj came also. And because he was Malaysian, so he could stay here. And he stayed here and he did wonderful. He traveled around and he got people to become life members. 
you know, they have a program, Life Membership. And they go to the wealthy people, especially, you know, big, big professional people, lawyers, and doctors, and like that, and get them to give us some of money and be a life member. And Bhakti Prachandananda Maharaj was doing like this. He was going around the country and he enrolled many life members. And all the money was used to develop Krishna consciousness here in Malaysia. So he was very dedicated in his service to Srila Prabhupada. So he worked hard for many years. Finally he succumbed to, as all of us have to do one day, you have to give up the material body. He left the world, but he left the world in Krishna consciousness. He was always in the association of devotees. He never went back to the material, to the material world. He gave his life for the service of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada's mission. And we have his samadhi. His samadhi is there at our um Jaya temple. If you go to other side of Malaysia, to Butterworth, near to Butterworth, there's a, a region called Sipram Jaya, where we have the, our temple of devotional understanding called Todu. Todu Temple. So at the Todu Temple, we have the Samadhi of His Holiness, Bhakti Prachendranandana Swami Maharaj. And I'm sure today they had a big festival there and the devotees would all have been there and they would speak the glories of Maharaj and they would honor him with a nice feast. Maharaj liked very much kurma and kalambo. He was fond of Malaysian cooking. <coughs> we enjoy very much to taste these things. So he was a wonderful devotee and I'm very fortunate to have known him for so many, many years. Bhakti Prajapadana Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Hare Krishna. So, His Holiness, Bhakti Vidyan Swami Maharaj, so please come take Prasadam and also have some light dinner, please think. So, tomorrow we'll see after Sunday program, a Saturday program, and continue with the presentations. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs>